Hello, my name is Frank Prem. Uh, welcome to this first in a short series of videos looking at the ways in which an image can be used to influence a piece of writing. What I'm going to do is to take uh, some example images that I've used and draw attention to some of the things that caught my eye before the poem that goes with each image was written. Um, what I hope is that uh, that you also will be able to get a sense of the depth of an image. If every picture can tell a story, what do you need to see to enable it to do so? That's the purpose. So, welcome, and I hope you enjoy. We're starting with a couple of poems from Sheep on the Somme, my recent release. Um, I'm going to start by having a look at this studio portrait of a very handsome but also very young man dressed in his full uh, AIF regalia um, this is a studio portrait that would have been taken, I think, before he shipped out. And the description that the Australian War Memorial has attached to this photograph is, Yes, New South Wales, circa 1915, 4524, Private Malcolm McIntosh Southwell, 20th Battalion, AIF. Who was killed in action on the Somme, France, on the 15th of November 1916? Um, so that's the first thing. Here is a picture of a young man, proud, handsome, and ready to leave. This would have been a picture taken for his family in, in my reading of this, something perhaps for his mother or his father to have as the keepsake while he went off on his great adventure. So I've highlighted now uh, the area of uh, Malcolm's hat. It's the Australian slouch hat, uh, a mark of pride through generations now. And on the side that we can't see, there will be a rising sun insignia attached. Um, and also you'll see that there is that hat band, which I didn't know the term for at the time when I was studying these pictures. And so I looked it up and, uh, and I found that it was called a puggery. I hope I pronounced that right, but a puggery. Uh, for the hat band. So that was a first thing that I that caught my eye. It was um, an element of uh, detail to focus on. Equally, uh, I might have focused on you know, his buttons or whatever it is that he was holding in his hand, but every picture has some element of detail for us to focus on. And it's when we pay attention to those details that we start to build up, not a whole, the, the, the image is there and it is whole, but we start to build up a fuller sense of what's going on in the picture, of developing a reaction to that picture. The next element that, uh, that I focus on in this picture is Malcolm's face. The, it's the face of a young boy, and as I've done my bit of research uh, for the Sheep on the Somme book, which wasn't extensive, all of this material is there to strike the senses rather than to uh, necessarily intellectually understand and, uh, and take on board. But the impression I had was that there were so very many young men boys, some of them, as young as 16, younger if they could get away with it. The, and it gives the sense of something extraordinary happening, not just the war, which was so far away from Australia, but something happening within 
uh, the population of the country itself, the small population at that time, and affecting the young men, whether it was this need to see the world or to test themselves against the world to see if they're up to it, whatever it, it might be. Something drove these young men in their thousands to sign up and to go off and fight in another country's war. And the more I've looked at these faces, the more extraordinary that has seemed to me. Now we can see I've tripped myself up there. Um, the third uh, element of the image um, that I wanted to draw attention to was, in fact, the puggery, and I've talked about it out of turn. This is because um, I need to prepare the images for this process before I actually record um, this discussion. But there you have it. Those are the three elements in this picture of young Malcolm that... Uh, combined to catch my eye before I had written a word. And in this particular combination, it is they that suggested a poem to me. I think I said before, I might have, I might have focused on the buttons that, uh, that are quite prominent there. I might have focused in the object that he has in his hand. I haven't tried to decipher what that is because it was the the face, the innocent young face, the earnest innocence of that face, the puggery and the slouch hat that uh, that caught my uh, my creative attention. Um, so that's that for that poem. I'll I'll read the uh, the poem from the book now just to finish off this particular sequence. In the poem that ended up being written, I called for pride. Malcolm, my boy, so well you look in your great coat and your slouch hat and khaki puggery, the rising sun gleaming at the side. Proud of you I am, so proud that, ah, oh, I could almost burst for pride. And in reading that very short poem, we uncover another element that the picture itself has prompted, and, and that is that the poem is in the voice of someone looking on. It's in the voice of the people left behind. So we have an image of this young man in, in his pomp, in his young, glorious pomp. But the image is for someone else, for someone who has been left behind. And that person, whether it's mum or dad, is so very, very proud of this, of this boy in this image that they could nearly die, they could burst for love and of course what we know now with hindsight is that Malcolm was the one that died and then you're left to imagine well what kind of life did those loved ones uh, have after they got the news of his passing but there's an awful lot that comes from a straightforward studio portrait <clears throat> of the kind that was taken by hundreds and hundreds of these uh, these soldiers going away. And I've used a few of them in Sheep on the Somme, but each one uh, is very powerful uh, in the way that it can tell a story. And I believe that it's by focusing on detail one, detail two, detail three, that we start to develop a bigger sense of what's going on in this picture, what can the picture tell us. What can I then do to tell someone else about what they might see in that picture? So it's a great exercise. Um, I'm going to sign off there on this one. I stumble through uh, a new project with you. Um, I hope, well, 
what I'd like is is to hear from you about uh, about your impressions, your reactions, because I'm very keen to do some more of uh, of this kind of exposition and to engage in discussion for my sake as well as for the sake of any reader who might be interested in it. So that's all for me for this time. Frank Prem, www.frankprem.com. Um, I'll talk to you next time, chat to you anytime.